Hello, everybody. Um, this is really a very important moment in history. Uh, and I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I've been working on this for a while, uh, trying to discover this. And I would say uh, it may seem like a fairly simple idea. Um, but this took thousands of years uh, to understand a lot of these ideas um, and uh, kind of like where we're going with that next. So uh, I I was kind of trying to come up with a meme uh, for what uh, we're about to talk about. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about the meme yet. We'll just kind of go through the ideas to start with. Um, so... Uh, Basically, uh, there's the main question of how Earth works um, and how that relates to the sun and the rest of the universe, uh, both logically and spiritually. So uh, we're just only now starting to uncover some of the details um, for how our planet works uh, logically uh, in a very comprehensive way. Um, you know, we, we, for the first time, have a map of the entire planet. Um, we can see all the earthquakes. Uh, we even understand uh, a lot of people in history never have even heard of the aurora um, or how we're even connected to the sun. Um, so there's just a ton of information that uh, is really awesome that we have access to, and it's certainly... Uh, there's a lot of people involved in understanding everything here. Um, I'm really thankful to be able to look at the earth uh, from a spiritual perspective and kind of think uh, about what this means uh, to uh, our lives here on the planet. So what I basically wanted to say here, uh, so here we have a picture of the sun um, and it's not in the same size frame uh, as the planet Earth at all, but uh, you can basically see that there's a lot of heat coming from the sun, uh, especially if you sit outside all day. Um, there's uh, quite a lot of heat and you can see that there's, as the Earth spins, there's a field around it and you can kind of start to see that uh, in this image here. I'll show you here, but here you have something called the Aurora and this is Antarctica. Uh, and you can kind of see it's lighting up. Now, why are these sparks here? Uh, and you can see they kind of went through a major uh, phase change there right at the end. It just kind of went really bright. Uh, so what what is going on? What, why is that? So uh, we're basically uh, tying that in with a whole nother concept in terms of spiritual stuff. So uh, one question that I've been working on for a while uh, and we still don't have a full answer to this question, uh, is basically about life on Earth uh, and also connecting uh, different spiritual concepts uh, that different people believe around the world uh, could be pretty different. Um, and why we live on this planet... Uh, so basically... Uh, uh, we have a kind of an interesting story here on our planet, right? We have... Uh, Jesus Christ uh, returned to the planet Earth. Uh, and then we also have India here uh, that believes uh, in, in some different ideas. And then we have China here uh, believing in some other ideas. Uh, but one interesting idea that I've been trying to think about carefully uh, is this idea of reincarnation. Uh, and uh, particularly looking at a, a new concept uh, that I've been calling electromagnetic field reincarnation. So uh, what does that mean exactly? Uh, it's not a term that's really used anywhere uh, until uh, recently. Um, so basically uh, what what I noticed uh, in these diagrams is that there's basically a loop here, right? You basically have uh, the North Pole connected to the South Pole and then here the North Pole is actually also connected to the South Pole but it goes way out here. So the sun just like blows uh, these fields way into outer space and some of them never even return to earth and the closer you get to the poles 
uh, the more likely it is that those will never, those basically go into deep space. So the North Pole and the South Pole are particularly unusual. And you also have this aurora, which we've been looking at here, right? So there's something very weird going on. And there's also this radiation. Here's a picture of Jupiter. And you can see there's all this radiation kind of vibrating off of the planet. Um, but here's a diagram that kind of gives you all the different ideas here. So there's something called the these these radiation belts and you can see this goes way into outer space but there's a particular pocket right here uh this name here uh could be anything i'm actually calling these uh the uh related to reincarnation right so uh spiritual uh so basically these fields actually loop do a full loop here um <clears throat> and some of them actually snap with the universe and that particularly happens in this region here it's actually ultimately just one point um but you can measure it and you can say it's from here to here or wherever really uh and then there's also these pockets um that you noticed here on this as well as you see on planet earth and you can see there's basically you could basically say two or three major sections right there's a there's this rotational axis there's a section through here there's an inner and an outer and then the planet's spinning, right? Uh, this one is also pretty good to see. I'll just show it really quick. Uh, maybe zoom out so you can see this here at a bigger scale. So this will get into it. So you can see here, there's all these, the diagram of where this is all going. So some of these definitely do loop a lot easier than others. And you can see it all around on that. So that happens on every planet. Uh, uh, everything in the universe actually has some form of field associated with it as well as gravity, uh, gravitational field. So uh, that's important to know about. And here you can see even the sun has a similar characteristic because it is also rotating uh, and it's huge amount of energy. And you can see there's some solar cycles here. Uh, but what the heck am I talking about in this discussion? So uh, why is this a spiritual discussion at all? Uh, and why is this a major important uh, moment in history? So one of the things I've been trying to work on is uh, the concept of reincarnation and what that means in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, potentially like if we have, if we are spiritual beings, uh, in some kind of invisible world, what is going on and why is it that India believes uh, so heavily in this reincarnation concept and what does it mean? So you can see there's a point here, but where does this go? So tonight we're gonna to talk about this for the first time in history. I was tracing this and I've been looking at this, there's actually two parts. So I didn't wanna talk about this publicly until I had a little bit more of a solid two-dimensional perspective and this is where it's going to be really awesome in our discussion tonight so where does this go right we know that there's these weird loops kind of circling around our planet and basically gravity will pull some of that back into the planet and actually refocus those fields so there's definitely something going on here and this tip of india but where does this go so interesting thing is, is it splits into this y intersection here which i've been talking about quite heavily here and you can see Africa's tip on one point here and then also Perth on the other. So there's this three-way intersection here uh, heading out to what I've been calling the capital of Antarctica. Uh, and then it basically heads to Antarctica, right? And then we saw uh, this is kind of the top of the head of Antarctica and basically the cerebellum and kind of the spinal cord heading down here. But where does this go? So let's keep tracing this back here and, and see where this is going on the other side of the planet. Now you can see there's a very weird two-shaped thing here. Uh, you might want to very carefully look at that, but let's keep tracing this and see where this goes. And you'll be very surprised where this ends up. So it actually ends up right here, right? This is uh, very close to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Um, now, that's very interesting, right? We have this, uh, so we basically are hitting a point here, but the point that I really wanted to emphasize uh, that kind of really changed my mind about everything, this is fairly easy to understand uh, that that would be significant 
uh, the relationship here, and then also going north to the North Pole, uh, you can see another triangle, and I didn't trace it all the way, but you'll see there's a, another triangle on the North Pole right here. Uh, I'm trying to work on a film project about this, and there's actually maybe three of them. There's this one here, this one here, and then another one with Greenland, right? And you basically also have what I'm calling the actual North Pole. The spiritual North Pole is actually between here, which is the Bering Strait. So there's kind of a difference between an electromagnetic North Pole, which might be off center. So the actual North Pole is like right in the North, is the actual North Pole. And then there's the electromagnetic North Pole or the um, where your compass points to, which is basically right in here at that point, interestingly enough. And, but if you keep tracing that back down, you'll see that that also goes to Puerto Vallarta, that same triangle right here. So there's actually a pretty, it's pretty comfortably uh, set there. Now, what I've been really wondering about in all this as I pull back around here is what the heck is going on with Africa, right? So this is where the story gets extremely interesting because uh, in all this discussion, uh, of how the earth works, uh, if I may <laughs> go into this. Here's the north pole of the sun and the south pole of the sun. And you can see it's not exactly the same in terms of the uh, sunspots, right? So before we get too detailed on this, I want to just make sure that we're on the same page here, right? So this is all very understandable, these loops here. But what if we were thinking about the horizontal axis, right, or the equator? That really changes our perspective entirely um, because now we're starting to look at a whole new, and then we also look at the spirituality. If definitely our planet is alive, we have a lot of life here, but what if the planet is actually doing something um, really interesting spiritually, right? So let's just look at that. So. Let me zoom out here for a second so you can see. I'm going to center it on India. I like it. I like the conversation around India because it's such a sharp point. It may be that the focus in reincarnation is primarily human on India, but what about with Africa, right? So there's a huge difference in size and also biodiversity. But the interesting thing is that conversation is fairly – I'm going to let you do the research here, but – Let's say if we do horizontal and we start tracing it from this point. So the interesting question here that really kind of threw me for a whole conversation, and I'm sorry this is taking, my computer's probably going to crash here, um, maybe because it's we're trying to <laughs> discover something so awesome. But there's a really interesting thing is that if you look at the hurricane maps, they're almost always generated right around here, which is actually called Dakar, Senegal. There's a couple mysterious islands, Cape Verde Islands, um, in that region as well. So uh, rather than thinking about this, you can go through that and check a look at that loop. But I'm actually going to do the horizontal loop for the first time in history. So this is pretty amazing because now we have uh, – we can start to see this, right? So let's just see. This Dakar Senegal thing is going to be really interesting for you, right? So you can see just how straight a line that is. I'm going to try to pull this over so we can see. And I'm sorry, it's really kind of weird here. But guess what happens here? This is kind of really amazing. So this all loops here. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on. Uh, but look at what we're doing here, right? We're basically going right through here. Now this is basically the Earth's halo. There's a weird circular thing here, and there's also another one uh, down south. But this is what really impressed me about all this. So we're coming through here, we're tracing this, going through here, it actually goes a little bit close to Puerto Vallarta, interestingly enough, right? This earthquake line here, as well as these, and it's kind of circling around here because there's a lot of energy from all those earthquakes. But if we keep following this, uh, it's pretty unbelievable what happens here. Um, <laughs> the story here is pretty unbelievable. Guess where it goes. Look at this. This, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
it is the first time in history I've ever seen this. So this is the space boot. If you're familiar with uh, New Zealand, this is Fiji right here, okay? And uh, I was just talking with one of my friends that works in the moving business tonight, and we were both commenting, this boot is kicking something into deep space. So the crazy thing about this whole discussion is we just came from that tip of Africa, somehow going to Fiji and all the, this is the this is a huge amount of energy but guess what happens here the, and I'm not going to do the full story for you because I, I think some people are going to be so excited uh, that are interested in both the spiritual side of things and the astrophysics <laughs> my computer's like completely stopped right now uh, sorry about this I might have to pause the video or something because it's not there's so much data here unfortunately uh, I think my computer even crashed, sorry about this. Uh, let me see what I can do. Uh, but it's just unbelievable discussion here because, uh, okay, my computer's like completely toasted. Uh, but the really, I wanna trace this really carefully so you can see, because it's really amazing here. So you see that boot, that space boot, there's only, there's two other boots on the planet. One is Italy and the other one is on the North Pole, but guess what happens here? So we're tracing this all the way there's a, a very, very solid connection here on these earthquakes. You can see it's heading all the way through here, but guess where this goes? You'll, you'll be completely surprised. So it heads into this another Y-shaped thing, but it actually is very interesting. This all goes to the North Pole. This becomes the ring of fire, but guess where this goes? If we trace this, we're going back towards India again, which is unbelievable. So now for the first time, uh, in history, <laughs> we're able to connect both the horizontal and vertical axes, making a two-dimensional perspective of the spirituality of our planet. Um, so it's not just that one loop. We actually have this heading over to here to Myanmar. This, interestingly, is very similarly shaped to Perth, which is very similarly shaped to Cape Town, South Africa. So basically all these earthquakes, and this is this is maybe 100,000 different earthquakes on this map right here. And you can see it's loading even more. This is all spreading into Tibet. There's a whole separate spirituality there uh, to think about, as well as this whole connection up through here. Uh, so basically this right here heads back to the mountain range. I'm sorry this is so slow. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit maybe that will make it easier, but it's just so much information here, and I'm really sorry about this, but uh, let me try to spin it. I'm really sorry about this. So it's not loading all the data, and I probably need to just eliminate some of the earthquakes. I just wanted people to have, see everything. So now we had that that north-south axis, and now we're looking at east-west axis almost right on the equator. So uh, how does this relate to other planets? exoplanets that we have never even seen before uh, some of these ideas may become extremely important uh, if we're trying to do deep space spiritual <laughs> movements to other planets so uh, for example uh, essentially do stuff that we cannot even imagine possible today uh, spiritually so again this all went through here and here and then around again and <laughs> let me just give you some other information in case you're uh, just starting to uh, study some of this stuff. So basically, this all heads out to Europe, all those earthquakes. This split, this is basically Afghanistan and all these mountains here. So it's basically the middle section, so the Middle East. And now, uh, again, you're splitting here. This is kind of, if you're familiar with this, so my computer's just completely slowed down here. But Let's go back to the big picture again. So what we just did for the first time in history is started to look at this uh, spiritual perspective of the planet, right? Uh, both uh, from a uh, basically looking at the electromagnetic fields uh, and also the concept of reincarnation of how these fields loop through a cycle here, both this way and on the equator. Uh, so uh, let me just give you a little bit more information. Uh, so you may want to say <laughs> there's these solar cycles. 
Now here uh, is a kind of a graph of that. You can see over the years. So there's definitely a cycle in the sunspots. You can see heavy amounts of sunspots here, low amounts, heavy again, and low. And this lasts, um, I think it's 20 years or more. Um, so uh, you can see uh, that this is basically, there's gonna be some temperature changes on the planet as well uh, over those periods. And here you can see kind of a dust across the Milky Way which I thought was very interesting. Um, some other information that you may want to check out on helios seismology um, and the magnetosphere, as well as this uh, Van Allen Bell concept. And here's all the different satellites uh, currently their location. So these are located right here, where that's kind of like based on the aurora. And here's a page specifically on the aurora, and you may want to go through and look at this as well as well as a basic map of the planet, just seeing what's going on with the weather. Um, and then there's a 15 minute forecast. So I wanted to kind of say, um, the sun is on this side, it, just because the aurora is visible here, there actually is a lot of sparks on this side as well, because the sun is on that side, we just can't see them. It's dark on this side, that's why we can see them. So you can see it's dark here, and it's not perfectly centered right around the darkness either. So. Um, but this could be very helpful to take a look at. Let me see if I can even move this map. So I really hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, I'm going to try to do this one more time just so everyone can see the amazing uh, truth of this. So uh, what is really going on here um, is amazing. So basically we're moving on the South Pole here, heading to the South Pole again, right? We did notice again that there is a mysterious triangle. Here's that other boot that I was talking about on the North Pole, um, in case you were curious. So there's these three triangles up here. Um, you can see that that's pretty clearly a triangle here. And then you have kind of a mirror copy here. This seemed to be similar to uh, the shape, shape of Saudi Arabia. Um, and this fault line, if you trace it down through here and go all through there, it actually does go to Saudi Arabia, uh, interestingly. And this heads right across there too. And then there's these three main islands here on the North Pole, as well as this guy and the boot. And you can see Iceland here. And then what I'm calling the spiritual uh, North Pole here. Um, the reason is because there's actually maybe some kind of pathway through here, actually from Hawaii, um, I was even suggesting bringing asteroids and uh, trying to communicate with the planet uh, through certain passageways. So again, let's look at that India concept. Uh, so wherever you are on the planet, I'm sorry this is moving so slowly, but I don't know what's going on. Sorry about this. Uh, so uh, sorry about this. I may need to just, ah, there we go. Uh, but uh let me see if I can do something about this. So, uh, but again, you can see here, we're gonna move through here on the South Pole. Um, now there's some very interesting things that we did not discuss about. Remember when that uh, equator loop went through here, we're actually looking here. There's actually, uh, the sun to straight, and you can see here, there's some kind of weird other mysterious triangle heading out through here. Um, now you can see the shape of this, it's hard to see on this map. Um, but it actually does resemble this little tiny blip here, hook um, here. So let's look at here. Now, also you'll notice uh, Tasmania down here, um, basically pointing to the magnetic pole. Um, and here are some other things. And then these are these uh, slingshot bikinis that I've been talking about. Um, so uh, spiritually understanding what all this is doing, uh, putting the full puzzle together um, is really exciting. Um, and certainly I'm really trying to get some help uh, with all of this. So here you can see a, a major slingshot here um, heading actually to the North Pole. So if we were to trace this, I can show you that really quick uh, because we did talk a little bit about that in this discussion. So something seems to be happening here. You can see, uh, from this perspective, uh, you got almost a symmetric with uh, South America and Antarctica, and then all this earthquake buildup kind of sending something out into here. So what we notice here, this goes back to the spiritual North Pole. If we follow this all the way through here, we're gonna end up in Hawaii, and then even the North Pole. So here's Hawaii, 
right here. So that's slingshotting this, but guess where this goes? Right up to that spiritual North Pole, and we'll kind of pull it here. So here you can see Hawaii, it's kind of pulling in through here, and maybe even through here, because this is kind of slingshotting it through here. So then we have this way up to the North Pole here. So anyway, uh, sorry about this. You're probably completely uh, upside down on the earth right now uh, on the perspective. Let me see if I can get this a little bit faster. I'm really sorry about this. This is, oh, geez, I got some maps open and some other things, but uh, see what I can do to get some memory here. Uh, so, yeah, so basically, uh, uh, you know, we're starting to spin here and get back to the North Pole, but again, where were we on India discussion, right? So we, we actually had a, we actually had this conversation a long time ago about electromagnetic field reincarnation, but it wasn't until we got to the, uh, equator, uh, conversation now, it really is a huge discovery if you're not familiar with uh, hurricanes. And the fact that Africa create, could create these hurricanes somehow mysteriously, at least recently, uh, and essentially send those off. You can see the power of those hurricanes. Basically, it's kind of pulled this whole coast area here. You know, they come in through here and they swirl in through here. So basically... Uh, what I want to do is go back on that again. It's a little bit faster now, fortunately, because I freed up some memory. But you can see uh, this Cape Verde being very important. I want to zoom in just so you can see what might happen. There's also these islands here and this kind of thing here. So, uh, But Dakar, Senegal being just such a beautifully weird hook here. Uh, and I want to go back to Cape Town in a moment to show you that comparison with Perth, but it's a little bit faster now, fortunately. I'm really sorry about the speed before, but look at this here. So we're basically pulling out here and we head to that halo. And the interesting discussions that we've been having is that Earth's most lightning is actually right here. And there's a whole separate discussion on how the Andes Mountains that I've been having heads into here, Puerto Rico. And they're like, so if a lightning bolt hits here, which is extremely, could be enough power to light the entire planet uh, energy, there's kind of this, this shape here. And you can see it's basically a lightning bolt would hit here and head out. And it basically goes out to Bermuda and out, out here. And you can kind of see. So it's a little bit better to see on some other maps, but we're still tracing here across the ocean from all the way from. Senegal, Dakar, right? And uh, we've had some spiritual discussions about Africa working on undersea like society uh, out here. So right off the coast of Dakar. So because, uh, you know, uh, it may, may have some similar characteristics to living in outer space, living under the ocean. So, but basically here you're heading out through here. And again, the nice part about this is we connect two axes together right with uh, Puerto Vallarta, uh, which is actually right over in here, that bump that we hit from India. So we're basically spinning around through here. We see these weird, this is Galapagos Islands. This is super important island. Uh, I was calling this the capital of the North Pole for wild, wildlife, right? So we basically have human capitals and then we have uh, non-human capitals uh, for the planet if you're studying that kind of stuff. Uh, spiritually as well so uh but basically here i'm gonna keep going on this map so we're kind of cruising from dakar senegal and you can kind of see hawaii on the side there and there's this weird spot in here and then guess where we land unbelievable amount of earthquakes this is like crazy amount of earthquakes this right here this space boot completely radically changes everything on fiji right and you basically have hawaii out here kicking hawaii out this is the tallest mountain on the planet, Hawaii, including the seafloor. So there's no joke on Hawaii there. But Fiji and the earthquakes here is just a whole nother level compared to Hawaii. So anyway, uh, I'm really ecstatically happy about this discovery. I hope you are too. Uh, thinking especially how this relates to the future uh, for our entire planet, everything.
you know, someday when we're trying to get somewhere else in the universe, uh, this is like some early foundation for this. I'm like, sh I'm, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm so thankful. Um, at the same time, I really need help. I need your help to look at this. So, uh, huge amount of earthquakes, all booting everything, heading out here, this redirecting all that energy, horizontal energy across the equator. Now we're kind of shifting a little bit here uh and let me try to oh my gosh it's it's really slow because i mean we basically have a hundred thousands and thousands of earthquakes that we're looking at in this area way more than on the other side so we're basically heading out here still from dakar and still on the equator uh but just look at all the beauty of all this action on the planet and you can see the fault lines here being quite complex and then a really complex move uh, spiritually and you can see here this point in Australia these are long-term changes that we definitely need to think about and here's that hook similar to South at Cape Town South Africa so just a huge amount and this actually at one point probably was connected in in Earth's history in our deep geology right here in Borneo right so it's actually right here right now which is the Banda Sea it's called the Banda Arc. There's a huge amount of earthquakes that we've been having recently there. Um, but you can see the complexity here, one side heading here. But if we if we hug close to the equator, we can basically unbelievably make it back to India. And guess, look at what we're doing here. So we're spinning around through here and uh, basically getting to Myanmar. So I'm sorry that really messed up there, but... Uh, so we're basically that was Sri Lanka here on that and man unbelievable discovery so basically uh, wherever you are on the planet we want to think about how we're connected to these and this is not the only way to look at it right if you live in Africa or South America I mean this is just from the earthquakes perspective um, you know wherever you live is super important we're on a sphere I was having a funny discussion with someone well where I live Anyway, all, all these places are really interesting to look at, um, but this is maybe one of the initial um, first looks at this ever in our history. So I'm really thankful um, to be able to talk about this with you. So again, we look, just looked at that, and then also the north-south loop, and I'll just do that one last time in case you missed something. So I mean, look, at, look at the beauty of this whole three-way intersection here. You can see right in here, right through here and then kind of a diamond shaped and I'll bring this back just so you can see the amazing look of this because we probably didn't really have a very good look at it. Uh, but this is one of the most beautiful intersections in our planet. Um, and you can see that's all heading up to the North Pole. And there's kind of this split, this two way split here, all coming through here and just a huge amount of earthquake and these are different depths and this is kilometers can you imagine 800 kilometers deep into the earth some of these earthquakes unbelievable depth um in terms of uh some of these earthquakes and you can see this whole point here and this kind of looks like a spiraling galaxy i've been mentioning here is some kind of a really mysterious connection it's almost like a uh some kind of a uh there, there must be some very mist. This, the wildlife here in this region is unbelievable, and this is down in Singapore. Actually, this is the busiest port in the world. A lot of the traffic going from China and India as well uh, travels right through here in Singapore. So there's something very mysterious because there's got to be some weird fields connecting these two places. Uh, and then this is Sumatra here, and then there's also Java. And I can turn off. Let me turn off. I don't want to turn off all the earthquakes, but. I'll just do it just for a second so you can see. Oh my God, this is gonna be very slow. Sorry about this. Maybe not even possible. So uh, anyway, it's so slow right now that I'm gonna almost just leave it on this image. But there's so much work to be done in understanding all of this. Uh, and really on the spiritual side, uh, not just logical side. So I mean, if, you're, uh, if you have no background in science or anything, uh, you can probably help a lot on this just because uh, man, this computer is really kind of, uh, let me try to see what I can do to, uh, close this out. Sorry guys. Uh, 
but uh, there's just so much information here and I just wanted to encourage everybody to uh, really have fun not stress out about it too much and um, you know uh, just <laughs> there's so many ideas so what I really wanted to emphasize is that um, you know wherever you are on the planet um, try to look at it differently and uh, you know we're gonna find some very mysterious uh, logical and spiritual keys um, that we cannot quite comprehend yet so I don't know what's going on here sorry about this uh, it's some kind of uh, thing here so uh, but I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just maybe that can help I'm sorry this is so much information here uh, but uh, let me see if I can, yeah, it's a little bit better. So it's kind of loses some of the earthquakes and you can see just the fault lines here. So it's a little bit faster looking at it this way, but we don't get quite the detail on the earthquakes. So let me try to do it here. So, uh, but basically you start to see that whole loop here and that's just an unbelievable thing uh, all the way to Dakar, Senegal. So thank you so much uh, for talking to me about this and I really hope uh, you can... Uh, if you have any ideas or concepts on this, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I really pray for everyone uh, here. And I'm so thankful uh, for what this might mean and help us understand where we can go in the deep space and working together with the wildlife and so many other people. Thank you so much. So again, uh, you know why I've been doing this discussion, I have my window open the whole time. Um, I'm really careful about trying to listen to the earth um, and being cautious about not pushing further uh, and just really <laughs> listening to the earth and trying to uh, be wise about everything here.